So hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a groundwater level map using IDW and Krieging technique in RGIS. So now let's get started. So now let me explain about what is IDW and uh, Krieging interpolation technique. So interpolation is a fundamental geostatistical technique used in geographic information system to estimate the unknown value at a specific location based on the known data points. So it plays a crucial role in spatial analysis, especially in environmental studies, hydrology, meteorology, agriculture and mining. Among the various interpolation methods, the inverse distance weighing and Krieging are two widely used techniques that offers a different approaches to spatial predictions. So first we're going to focus on inverse distance uh, weighting interpolation. So inverse distance weighting is a is a deterministic interpolation method that uh, assumes that influence of a known data point uh, diminishes with increasing distance from an unknown location. It follows the principle that closer points contributes more to the estimation than the distant points based on the weighted average formula. So the mathematical formula for the IDW technique is given below. So the estimated value of Zx at unknown location x is calculated as below given formula. So the Zx which represents the interpolate value at the location x and Zi is known value at the sample point i and the Di which represents the distance between the sample point i and the location x and the P which represents the power parameter that controls the weights, uh, weight of the distance that is commonly set to 2 and n is represents the the number of neighboring points considered and now this is our arc uh, map interface so we have two different layers one layer which represents the point data that is water level data for the specific study region and the second layer which represents the the study area boundary so now we're going to perform the interpolation for our water groundwater level for the specific study region so first we're going to navigate this option called uh, arc toolbox and in that we're going to navigate this option called spatial analysis tool and uh, in that we're going to uh, navigate to this tool called interpolation and in that we're going to click this first tool called idw so idw it interpolates a raster surface from uh, points using an inverse distance technique So before that, let me explain about this, uh, how to import the point data in ArcMap. So you're going to navigate this layer, final water level. So you're going to right click and click this option called open attribute table. So in the attribute table, you can able to visualize, we have FID, shape, latitude and longitude and water level fields. So now to add this particular point into ArcMap, let me show you how to do that. So this is my Excel containing latitude and longitude and water level of each well for example this particular well has a latitude and longitude and a water level in meters so now to add this particular this particular data into arc map so first we have to navigate this is option called file and in that we're going to navigate this option called save as so we're going to click this option called browse now navigate to the folder location where you could like to save this file and the file name is water level data so make sure that you save as a csv comma delimited so make sure that you save this file as a csv comma delimited so once you did that we're going to click this option called save so we've already saved this particular file here water level data so now click save so once you did that i'm going to navigate back to arcmap so to add uh, the water level data into uh, arcmap we're going to navigate this option called add data and click this option called add data and now navigate to the folder location where you saved your water level data as a csv file format so we can uh, use this particular option called uh, connect to folders so now click this option called pc and in that navigate to the drive or a folder where you saved your water level as a csv file format so for now we're going to select as a e drive where i have saved so I've navigated to my folder location i'm going to click ok so now you can able to see this is the water level data dot csv you're going to click this and click this option called add so in the content section you can able to visualize our water level data in csv file format so to convert to a point feature i'm going to right click 
and click this option called display X and Y data. So in the X field, uh, select longitude and in the Y field, select latitude. And uh, you can select your coordinate system of your choice. For example, you can set a different coordinate system. So currently I've set to GCS WGS 1984. So in case if you want to set to a different, you can uh, you click this option called edit. Now navigate to the suitable coordinate reference system. So I'm selecting geographic coordinate system. So in that I'm going to navigate to the world and I'm going to select WGS 1984 and I'm going to click OK. So once you selected the coordinate system, so we're going to click OK to export as a point feature in ArcMap. So I'm going to click OK. So now we have managed to uh, convert our CSV to a point feature. So to convert to a shape file, we can right click and uh, click this option called uh, navigate this option called data. In that way, I click this option called export data and navigate to the folder location where you could like to save this file. So I have navigated to this folder location of shape file. So I'm going to save, I have already saved as a final water level dot shape file. So you can able to see here final a dash water level. So let me save it as again as a final water level one. So once you enter the name, I'm going to click save and click OK. So do you want to add this exported data to your map as a layer? Yes. So I'm going to remove all of the layers. So I'm going to remove this and also I'm going to remove my previous water level. So to perform our IDW interpolations, first we're going to navigate this option called Arc Toolbox. And in that, we're going to navigate this called Spatial Analyst. And we're going to select this tool called IDW. So in the input point feature, first we're going to click our final water level point uh, shape file containing the groundwater level. I'm going to click this. And in the Z value, uh, select your select your water level field. For example, I'm going to select the water level WL and choose your output location where you could like to save this particular file. So I'm going to navigate to the folder location by clicking this option here. So I'm going to save this particular file as IDW water level. So I'm going to click save and leave the output cell size as the default and uh, navigate to this option called environments. So we could like to perform the interpolation within this uh, study area boundary. So to do that, we're going to navigate to the environments. And in that, we're going to navigate to the processing extent. And then in extent section, I'm going to select as uh, this particular study area. That is study area CMA. And similarly, I'm going to navigate to the raster analysis section. And uh, in that, in the mask, I'm going to select study area CMA. And I'm going to click OK. So this is study area CMA and uh, I'm going to click OK to perform the IDW interpolation for this groundwater level data for the study region. So the tool has run so you can able to visualize the result here. So I'm going to turn off this particular layer. I'm going to place this particular turn off this layer. So now you can able to visualize the IDW interpolation for the study region. So you can also adjust this number of classes and the water level. For example, I'm going to right click and click this option called properties. And here I'm going to navigate the number of classes. So I can select the number of classes to be around five. And you can select your color ramp of your choice. For example, I could like to select this particular color ramp of this job, color ramp of this choice here, this particular color. And you can also edit this numbers here. So for example, uh, there is a lot of decimal places here so i could like to reuse this as a decimal places so so for this value is around 0 0.026 uh, so i'm going to reduce i'm going to round off to zero and in this case it is around uh, 3.110 uh, so i'm going to reduce to three and similarly for other classes too So here you can able to visualize how we have managed to round off this particular numbers, the groundwater level. So I'm going to click apply and I'm going to click OK. So currently we are visualizing the result. So you can able to see the groundwater level for this specific color, which represents the water level varies from zero to three meters. And for this specific color, the groundwater level varies from three to six meters. And for this uh, yellow color, the color varies from six to nine and orange 
the 9 to 12 and for red 12 to 15 and uh, you can also drag the study area boundary below the IDW layer so we can navigate to this option list by drawing order and now you can draw your study area boundary below the IDW layer and you can turn this on and it comes you can also adjust the outline color so I have uh, have left click on this particular symbol so it gives us this symbol selector so we're gonna select the outline width to be around one we're gonna set the color to be black and uh, in this I'm uh, gonna select no color and click OK so to drag the study area boundary layer up so we're gonna click this and hold and place it up over the IDW layer so now we have performed IDW interpolation next we're gonna perform the Kruging interpolation so let me explain about the Kruging technique so Kruging is a geostatistical interpolation method that not only considers the distance but also spatial autocorrelation which refers to how the correlated data points are based on the the proximity unlike IDW the Kruging generates the statistically optical optimal uh, estimates by modeling spatial variability through through a semi variogram so there are different types of rigging. So first, the ordinary rigging assumes the mean value of the data is unknown and varies in space. And the second, uh, the type of rigging is universal rigging, accounts for a deterministic trend in the data, and simple rigging assumes a constant mean throughout the dataset and indicator rigging used for a binary classification problems example the presence slash absence of contamination and last is a co rigging uses multiple correlated dataset for interpolation so the mathematical formula for rigging so rigging estimates the value of uh, z where x at unknown location x using a weighted sum of uh, known values so the formula is given below here so here the lambda i which represents the weights assigned to each known uh, data point and the z i which represents the observed value at the sample location the sample location observed value at the sample location i and the n which represents the the number of neighboring points cons uh, considered the weights lambda are determined by solving the Kruging system of equations which minimizes the estimation variance using the semi variogram model so to perform Kruging interpolation, we're going to navigate uh, this layer, this particular option called Arc Toolbox. And we're going to click this option called in the Spatial Analyst. Uh, we're going to navigate this to this particular option called Interpolation. And in that, we're going to click this tool called Kruging. So we have to double click. So Kruging interpolates the raster surface from a, from a point using Kruging. So in the input point feature, I'm going to select my final water level 1 and the Z value field, I'm going to select my water level field and now choose your output file location where you could like to save this Kruging uh, raster, the Kruging, uh, the groundwater level raster using Kruging method. I'm going to, to save this, I'm going to click this option. So we have navigated to the folder location where I could like to save this file. So I have entered as water level krigging.tiff. I'm going to click save and uh, leave the output cells as a uh, default. And uh, so to perform the krigging interpolation within the study area boundary, so we have to select this particular study area boundary that is study area CMA. So this is our boundary. So you can able to see that. And uh, to select that boundary, I have to click this option called environments. Navigate to this option called Processing Extent and the, in the Extent section, I'm going to select my Study Area Boundary that is Study Area CMA and navigate to the Raster Analysis section here and uh, I'm going to select in the mask the Study Area CMA and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click OK to run this Kruging tool, the Kruging Interpolation tool and uh, we have our Kruging uh, raster so we can able to visualize this is the groundwater level uh, interpolation uh, we have performed using Kruging technique so we can able to see this is our uh, raster so you can compare the, with this uh, IDW raster here so let me reduce the number of classes so to do that I'm gonna right click and click this option called properties 
So in the classes, I'm going to select the number of classes to be around 5. So you can also select the number of classes to be 4. It's according to your choice and your nature of your work. So I've selected the number of classes to be around 4. And you can select the color of your choice here. So you can also select another color. So I'm going to click apply and click OK. So this is our rigging uh, interpolated raster versus the IDW. So let me reduce the number of classes to be around uh, 3 and let us visualize the result. I'm going to click apply. So comparatively, the number of 3 classes uh, setting uh, the raster to be 3 classes, it looks pretty good compared to the previous or 4 classes. So I'm going to click OK. And now let us see the comparison between the IDW and Krigging interpolation technique. The feature, so this is the IDW and we are, we're going to classify IDW and Krigging interpolation technique based on the approach, weighting method and assumption and computations. So assumption, so IDW is based on the deterministic uh, method and Krigging is based on geostatistical method and weighting methods based on distance and for Krigging is based on spatial autocorrelation. And assumptions, so the IDW is based on closer points have more influence. And for Krigging, the data follows a statistical spatial structure. Computational, so it is simple and fast. And the Krigging, IDW is simple and fast. And Krigging is complex and computational. Computationally, complexity. And the error estimation, so uh, the IDW has no error as, as, uh, assessments. And the Krigging provides estimation variance so IDW is, uh, is best for evenly distributed data small data sets and Krigging is uh, more suits for the larger data sets with spatial trends so let me get back to uh, ArcMap so in this video I've shown you how to uh, perform IDW interpolation and Krigging interpolation in ArcMap using uh, the groundwater level data so thanks for watching and uh, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and give us a like.